Hello, and welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft. This is a Powered Cube Online, and hopefully we can open some power this time. Or something kind of sweet. Nahiri. Nahiri ultimates quickly. It's a sneak attack effect, kind of, that returns the creature back to your hand, so you get to cast it again, or sneak it in again. Search your deck for it. That's kind of fun to try to get going. Nothing else here is, you know, so amazing. I mean, Worn Power Stone is powerful. Polluted Delta is always fine. Yeah, let's try Nahiri, though. I'm going to test this out. One of the new additions to the cube. Uh, a lot of the cube is similar. I mean, they can't change that much at a time. But anytime a new set comes out, they usually add a few cards. And it does change the flavor of it. Here, yeah, this is this is one of the better cards they've added, I think. It's a bit weak. Well, the fact that this is two colors is kind of limiting, but the fixing is so good in cube that it shouldn't matter too much. Tinker. Ooh, this one. This one is tough. There's a lot of good cards in this pack. Shackles. Probably not for us, but it's pretty good. Little Jace, uh, Sword of Body and Mind. Kiki Jiki as a combo with several cards in the set. I think all four combos are in here. Pester Might, uh, Deceiver Exarch, the Angel, and the thing that steals a permanent. I think I'll just take Tinker. This can so quickly win a game. Maybe some kind of Jeskai deck. We just have to keep our eyes out for a really good target. And some little stuff. Alright, so what kind of little stuff is there? Mox Diamond is pretty cool. We do need the fixing. It does help get like a turn 2 Tinker or something like that. Ponder is also a nice one. Jite is always strong. Yeah. I guess here the Mox Diamond is kind of what I want. I mean, we're in so many colors, and it works so well with Tinker for a turn two power play. All right, what do we have here? Scalding Tarn. Yeah, now that we kind of know what some of the colors we're going to play are, that might just be the, the right pick here. Strip Mine is better if you're playing less colors. I mean, it's always fine. But if it wasn't for Scalding Tarn, I guess we could take Thirst for Knowledge. Ah, uh, that's a good one, too. Thirst and Jace. And Thirst is probably a bit better. Scalding Tarn versus Thirst for Knowledge. You know, I'm going to take Thirst for Knowledge. There are some times when... Yeah, I mean, the fact that it's instant, all that stuff... Pretty strong. Ah, uh, another good pack. Yeah. In Cube, you usually find a lot of good packs because there's just a lot of good cards. Enlightened Tutor, Thran, Dynamo, and Temio. We don't really know what we're ramping to with this Thran Dynamo yet. Uh, still, it's a strong card to be taking. But I like Temio here a bit better. bit of personal preference there, but I think it's worth it. Is it Signet? Nice to get this kind of late. And still, the, the good build-around cards are here. Mirari's Wake, Reanimate, Show and Tell. I think, is it Signet? Alright, dropping off a little bit on the kinds of cards we're interested in. Some dual lands with black, Riftwing Cloudscape, no artifact synergy in this pack. Rashad and Port, another one, but better for an aggressive deck. I'm just going to take the, wrap, the Cloudscape. It comes in handy in a lot of situations where you wouldn't expect Oath of Druids. Now that is interesting. We don't really have any creature... Well, we don't have to play the Cloudscape. We don't have that many creatures. So... We could take Oath and just play one or two powerful creatures, and we have Tinker for one. 
but I'd rather just get this Orzov Signet. A little more reliable, and it keeps us, uh, you know, it keeps our deck a little less constricted on what it can play. Dismember is good. Council's Judgment. Yeah, I'll take Dismember. We're going to try to be a combo deck where we win early enough that it won't matter <laughs> our life loss. Vidalcan Shackles. Here's another good artifact. And we look heavy blue, so it's going to be at its best. Flame Tongue Kavu, him to Turok to cut it. Mother of Runes, which is nice. I don't know. Probably not playing any card in this pack. The strongest being him, but we're pretty far from being mono black. Or even heavy black. This is a card, I mean, it's so good in a creature mirror or matchup, but it's also pretty good out of the sideboard. All right, we could do well with a Tezzeret or some number of big artifact creatures like uh, Mur Battle Sphere or that Colossus that eats lands. Temple of Silence. Yeah, this pack is not great, but I'll take the Temple. Uh, Mishra's Factory is fine. Actually, it might be that. I mean, this it's an artifact. There are times when it comes in handy. And with a low creature count, you know, it's pretty strong. All right, Enlightened Tutor, ooh. One of the rare white cards that helps with an artifact synergy. Uh, it's not that rare. I mean, Esper with white is, is kind of the artifact shard. We could easily get uh, Vidalcan Shackles against an aggressive deck, or whatever we need. All right, Mystic Snake, Lifebane Zombie. Don't really care about either of those, although the Mystic Snake looks better when, well, Gideon Jura is fine. All right, we did it. We got Black Lotus, kind of the premier piece of power maybe the most exciting card in the the set. Some people would pick... Um, you could make an argument for like Soul Ring better, being better than Black Lotus. But I'd probably always just pick Black Lotus first because of how iconic it is. And it can't be that wrong. Anyway, in this pack it's far above everything else. So I mean you could just turn one Tinker, turn one whatever, Nahiri. Pretty cool. Kind of at its best in a storm deck, but that's not really what we're doing here. So, what are we doing here? Caracas. No big artifact creature yet. Gush. Gush is interesting, since we'll be playing a lot of islands. Yeah, let's take Gush. I'm kind of in for it. We could even uh, go into some kind of artifact or a uh, storm deck, even though I'm not like an expert at drafting storm for sure. Usually mess it up. Yeah, getting Jura is interesting. I'm not sure if we'll play enough white to make it really worth it. All right, let's see what we have now. Ral Zarek, interesting in this deck. Ulamog, colorless but not an artifact. If we took the Thran Dynamo, that might be a consideration here, a bigger one. And the Solemn Simulacrum is always pretty good. So we could go in different directions here. Um, frantic search if we really want to try to do storm.
Yeah, you know, uh, I'm going to take Solemn Simulacrum. Card's never going to be that bad. Preordain. It's nice to have something to do on turn one. It's a little stronger than Quicken, although Quicken's been alright. You could Quicken a Tinker. Or, yeah. That's almost like giving a creature haste, since they don't have any way to deal with your creature at sorcery speed. You just tinker at the end of their end step. Alright, Mystic Confluence. Sure, this is a... It's a force of will that you can't cast with... Um, you know, for free, but it has all these upsides of being able to draw cards and return creatures to their owner's hand. All kinds of good stuff. Or it's just five minute draw three, which is fine. Yeah, that looks like it. If we were in some kind of green storm deck, Heartbeat of string, uh, Spring would be good. Goblin Welder could be good. It works well with Solemn. But we're going to be heavy blue. This Mystic Confluence looks like it'll be strong. Now Gush is kind of free. You just return a couple islands. If we see Fast Bond, that might be something we could be interested in. Those usually go pretty quickly, though. Everflowing Chalice, yeah. That and Duretti. Both of these are strong. I'm going to take Duretti. We do have this critical mass of artifacts, and we do have a Black Lotus, so that does make Duretti better. But Chalice is a close second in my book. And Bribery. Oh, this pack is pretty good too. We've got Electrolyze, Lightning Bolt, Thalia, which is good against us, and Bribery. Sometimes Bribery is absurd. It really just depends on how good your opponent's deck is or how, how many ridiculous creatures they're playing. Oh, Remand. Yeah, another good one. Remand, Gruel Signet, Young Pyromancer, Planeswalker, Supreme Verdict. Almost all of these cards are considerations for this deck. The red's not that important from the Signet. I mean, it's, it's okay. The Counterspell, however, is an effect I really want access to. Thing in the Ice and Declaration in Stone. Now this removal is pretty hard. It works in a lot of different situations. Pretty good against Pack Rat. Thing in the Ice. We don't have that much. Like, Thing in the Ice doesn't work that well with what we have. I'll just take Declaration. Caracas Wheels. I guess that's a good sign. I mean, <laughs> this is a... Uh, you know, it answers a lot. It's kind of in our colors. And Ral's Eric comes back. I do like Ral's Eric. Just even the lightning bolt effect is strong. You can do two lightning bolts in a row. They usually spend some time focusing on it. And it ramps. Smash of these cards. I like this for the sideboard, and it's pretty good against us. And Elspeth. Planeswalkers are still good. This, despite how well Elspeth works with Honor of the Pure, I'll just take Westvale Abbey. Well, I'll tell you, we have no fixing, and Mox doesn't really help with fixing, but it's still going to be the pick here. As cute as it is to tinker for a Gilded Lotus, I'd rather have, you know, guaranteed value. No black combos with it, except these signets, because a turn one signet is pretty much a very strong play. You've got four mana on turn two with a mox and a signet. Yeah, and we have a lot of good four drops. It's got to be the mox here. We have, Now we're up to two pieces of power. You'd probably cut a color. 
or at least uh, cut some early bits of the color. We haven't been seeing many of these artifact payoff cards. Hopefully they'll start coming. All right, here comes, what, do we get anything? Demir Signet. Not the kind of payoff I was hoping for. I guess it's serviceable. Depending on how controlling we're going to be, Celestial Colonnade might be our win condition. Phantasmal Image, we don't have much that does well with Crucible, right? Not yet. We do kind of need the fixing from the Colonnade. Is it Signet, Orzov Signet, Demir Signet? This does let us splash black, but we don't have any black cards, so... Take the Colonnade. It fills two roles at once, the fixing and the win condition, late. <clears throat> right now, our plan is just to win off of our Planeswalkers somehow. Mishra's Workshop. Uh, that is a lot of ramp. But if we look at what we can cast with it, it's not that much right now. It's only a couple Signets shackles and solemn so on average this isn't gonna pull its weight i think so mana leak on the other hand that does help out our plan of being control the faster the format is the better these conditional removal uh conditional counter spells are ancient tomb yeah this is like a mini workshop that works well with uh Everything, not just artifacts. If there was a better card here, I would take it, but uh, I like Ancient Tomb the best out of these. Still need a couple more playables. We've got, let's see, 20 cards over here. And then 8 cards here. Lodestone Golem. It's possible that wheels the workshop, and Lodestone Golem is a nice combination with that. Turn one Lodestone Golem? Maybe. I like Days also. But, yeah, Lodestone Golem might just be able to win some games on its own. It kind of fits the theme of what this deck is trying to do. Let's take that. All right, Elish Norn and Tezzeret and Academy Ruins, but there's no recurrable artifact we have except Black Lotus. And I suppose Simulacrum if it dies. I like Tezzeret here. Does Skullclamp do anything? It, it does a lot with Elspeth, but once you play Elspeth, you already have <laughs> an Elspeth in play. Uh, if it had more combos, it would be more attractive. So yeah, I like Tezzeret. With enough Signets, you just win the game. Uh, and Academy. Still working pretty well with the theme. There's also an Ajani, but I like Academy there. Marsh Flats. We don't have dual lands, so it doesn't really fix mana. Tangle Wire. We're not going to wield a Workshop. I'd be very surprised. I'll just say Glenelendra. Yeah. Although Swords is, is very nice. And some other ones. Whew, okay. Winter Orb? Actually, I'm going to take that. We have so much that that untaps every turn, like the, the Signet the mocks, and we have some synergies with just like, uh, what is it, fetching it, animating it. So yeah, I like it here better than Legionnaire. Hmm, Sword of War and Peace. 
How many creatures do we just don't have that many creatures, so the sword isn't that attractive, but Shrine of Burning Rage. There's some inevitability to this. Eh, I'll take it. It's not really that exciting, but it's okay, I guess. Relic Warder is good against us. Let's drag down some of the cards that are a little less exciting. Moloku might be okay. I'm a little afraid of the double white here, and certainly double black, so I'll take Moloku. Blade Splicer. Sure, I guess that's the easiest thing. And, oh man, Academy Ruins. I'll take Temple. The fact that Academy doesn't fix and we kind of have too many colorless sources already makes that a bit easier. So what are we dealing with? All of these are mana sources, so we've got 25. We definitely want to be playing Bribery, keep all the ways we have of winning in. Glenelendra's nice. Nahiri, I'm not really sure what Nahiri does. Eh, it's just kind of good value. Duretti, Ralzeric. Dismembers a one drop. Tinker, I'll leave it in. We've got some silver bullets of sorts. Alright, so that first pass didn't help much. Now we can think about cutting a color entirely. So the easiest one to cut would be white, I guess. Just as easy as red. We could cut red and put in Gideon, Blade Splicer, things like that. Definitely in blue. How much does the red do for us? Not that much, right? Whereas playing something like Westvale Abbey is good with Elspeth, Gideon Jura wins on its own. We have Caracas and Celestial Colonnade. Yeah, I'll actually cut the red here. I like the red, but it's not so powerful. Like, we didn't get the uh, big creature to get out with Nahiri. We didn't get a big artifact to return with Duretti. Ral's Eric's just kind of meh. That's 23. We have a lot of 5 drops and some ramp. But I think I still think 17 lands is what we're going to aim for. Moloku. Is that any good? I prefer Cloud Skate, I think. Just because it's so much easier to cast. Cast it early. Alright, so that looks fine. And we have some... The signets are just good, even if you're off-color completely. But our signets are on-color at least half. Randomly, it'll help cast a dismember. Alright, we've only got three white cards, but they're double white, so I kind of want five, maybe. Twelve and five. At least to begin with. Temple... I'm going to cut the temple. Cut one of each for the uh, colorless sources. Jet. Black Lotus and Mox Diamond. Something like this. So how many white sources does this leave us with? Three, 
four, five, six, kind of. And how many blue sources? Importantly, we want a few islands to make the shackles work. So seven, yeah, seven and one. It's a bit awkward, but it'll work. You don't need to always steal a huge thing with the shackles for it to be good. Oftentimes you can just steal a chump blocker. Alright, let's give this one a try. <laughs> 